I imagine you've heard the expression, you can never have too many VCAs. Well, I feel that way about envelope generators and other modulation sources. So therefore, in the next few movies, I'm going to be looking at the Erogenous Tones Radar. It's an octal or eight channel envelope generator. Each channel can separately repeat, be an AD, attack decay, or an AR, attack release. It also has lots of options to control the shape and even how these channels interact. Now, what I've done is I've set up a basic patch using the Moog Mother 32, a second oscillator on this disting, and then a second disting as a wave folder. And here's what the layered sound sounds like. The mother has just one envelope generator. And I'm using that to control both the VCA and the VCF. I can play around and tune in something a little bit better on the, uh, on the wave folder. Or I can even patch the envelope generator out of the mother to the wave folders depth. But the basic problem is when you don't have a lot of modulation going on, whenever you sustain a note, nothing much is going on. So let's see if we can make this basic patch a lot more interesting by throwing more envelopes at it. I'm going to unpatch that envelope generator. And in general, I'm going to move this envelope generator out of the circuit. Now, one quirk of the Mother 32 is that I cannot use an external envelope generator to control its VCA, so I'm going to patch in an external VCA. I'm going to take the patch cord from the VCA and the Mother, and instead take the output of one channel of the IntelliGel, then patch my filter output from the Mother into the input of the IntelliGel. Now let's go ahead and take channel number one on the radar and run that through the green channel on my scope, my data. I take the output of that channel and run that over to the VCA's depth right there. The last thing I need to do is to take the trigger from my keyboard and instead have that trigger the radar. Now, fortunately, if you plug into one of the inputs on the radar, it is normaled to all of the jacks underneath. So I need just one gate connection to trigger all the channels of the radar. And you can see all of those LEDs blink, showing that they're all getting a signal. I have a very, very short release on this right now. Let's go ahead and increase the release. And let's go ahead and switch it to an attack release mode so the VCA will stay open while I'm holding a note. Kind of a long release there. That'll do. Let's go ahead and open up the filter so we can hear the VCOs more. And let's go ahead and use the second channel of the radar to envelope that wave folder. It creates something interesting going on there. So I'm going to patch second channel of the radar into the blue channel of my scope. Patch that to my wave shaper depth. And I have a very short decay. Look at that little chirp sound. Here's just that second oscillator. And I can increase the decay. Get a lot more movement in the sound. I can also slow down the attack. To go ahead and get a different effect. Now that depth is a bit much for me. If I want a more subtle effect, I could either patch that modulation voltage through a utility mixer, or since I happen to have the blip, the radar expander, I can use one of its functions to go ahead and add a digital attenuator to this output of the radar. So I'll go ahead and switch over to level mode right there. Choose channel two, since that's the one I'm working on. Let's go ahead and reduce its level and you'll see its blue trace get lower in the scope here. Maybe a little bit slower so you get a little more unfolding as we go here. Already, by separating the envelope for the VCA from the envelope for the wave shaper, we're already getting more evolution to the sound while I hold a note. Okay, next, let's go ahead and envelope that filter. Now, one of the cool things about radar is since it has so many channels to play with, it has a few options for you to combine channels together to create a more complex envelope shape. For example, I can combine outputs three and four, and it will give me an analog OR. Whichever is the higher level of those two envelopes is what's going to be passed to output number four. 
So let's go ahead and patch that over to the magenta trace on the scope. Number three. Let's go ahead and route that to the filter cutoff, VCF cutoff. I'm going to remove the contribution of the mother's envelope generator. Now you hear a nice little attack there, and you see the little pink spike. A nice little bite I'm getting. It's a very fast envelope generator. That's not even the fastest settings here. Get those really nice clicks out of it. Let's start by going ahead and increasing the release of number three, the first of my pair here, to create an initial spike. Okay, so now I have my initial bite on the note. Now I want the second envelope to come in later to give myself a double spike, a more complex attack. I'll go ahead and increase its release. And increase its attack time so it's still rising after the first EG, number three, has already fallen. Longer release. Now it's driving that filter pretty hard, so let's go ahead and reduce the contribution of that fourth envelope generator. I'm still in level mode on blip. I'll go to channel number four and reduce its level. A little more level. So that initial snap of the envelope. I still have an additional rise coming out of this envelope generator. Get a little bit more of a swell. All right, let's go ahead and lower the cutoff, make that more interesting. Change the speed of the wave folder. A little more ripple in the sound now. Okay, well we still have a lot more envelope generator channels to play with, so what else can we do with the patch? When you have more modulation sources, you look for more things to modulate. Well, since I have two oscillators, I could have one frequency modulate the other. If I did not have an envelope generator, it would just be a constant level. But since I have a spare channel, <laughs> four spare channels, I can go ahead and envelope the depth of my FM. So let's patch that in. I'm going to go ahead and take the pulse out. Run it through my second VCA down here. Patch that into the FM depth of my second oscillator. <laughs> Increase the FM depth there. And since I'm using the pulse width, if the pulse is spending less time high than it is low, it's going to shift the pitch up for less time than it's going to shift it down, and the result will be a downward detune. Let's open up the cutoff. So let's go ahead and patch another channel of my envelope generator. Channel number five into the yellow channel on data so you can see what it's doing. Take that and run that over to this VCA down here. Except for a very short attack release here. So I go ahead and use it to give myself a detune just in the attack. Change the depth on the VCA or on the envelope generator. I'll go ahead and tune down the envelope depth on the VCA. And instead of using it as an envelope, I can go ahead and make it repeat. Now you see the yellow channel blipping up and down, so I get sort of an LFO action on that detune. Let's slow down the attack. And 
even plays the pulse with. Take a less of a detune. And this is a case where I may go ahead and use one of these shape controls to make this more of a triangle sort of wave. Now you can see why I get so excited about having more modulation sources. I still have three more channels to go. By the way, you can combine all three of those channels to create a very complex envelope. And I could use that to change the pulse width modulation to play with the detune even more, or to encourage me to go ahead and get more modules just so I have more things to modulate. But anyway, that gives an overview of what the radar can do and why it's nice to have so many channels, even on a simple synth voice like this. Radar is the main envelope generator in my big system, by the way.